Hearst Oak State University is proud to host world-renowned painter Miss Cynthia St. James as a residential artist. Miss St. James is a self-taught artist whose work graced the cover of Terry McMillan's book Way to Excel and United States Postal Service First Quantum Stamp. It was a pleasure gaining first-hand insight from Miss St. James on what it takes to be a successful artist, businesswoman, and visionary in the 21st century. So here I am, I'm starting out this semester, I'm sorry, yeah, the year with you. And the other part that's so wonderful for me this about right now, especially this month, uh, is that next week I turn 65 and I sold my first painting when I was 20, so I'm celebrating 45 years as an artist. So this is a great way to, you know, to come here. And then I was so uh, uh, surprised when I found out that I'm, I'm your first artist in residence. I'm actually staying in a residence hall. I'm truly an artist in residence. <laughs> yeah, so that was just a very uh, rewarding and a great way to start the year and start celebrating my birthday as well. I was working in New York as an accounts receivable clerk for a mortgage insurance company, like right on Fifth Avenue. And every payday, it was obvious that I went to the art store nearby and bought art supplies. And that really had to be funny because, as you see, I'm not very tall, but I have big canvases like this rush hour on the subway in New York, if you can imagine, trying to get it up to the Bronx so I could paint it and oftentimes bring it back, paint it, and deliver it in Manhattan. So one of the lawyers that worked for the firm, uh, actually, he came to me and he asked me if I would paint a piece for his apartment. So it was my first commission piece, which is great. When you're commissioned, you know it's sold. And uh, as far as uh, pricing and things like that, you figure it out if you don't right away that get your 50% up front so that you're, you know, you're paid half and half when you finish. Back then, I worked with him. I had no idea about the business side of art. I had no problem. In fact, when I finished the first one, he immediately commissioned the second one. And that's how it started. It started with my coworkers, even my supervisor, commissioning me to do work for their different apartments. And all the different jobs I had, I always tried to bring something from that job that helped me in, in my career. So uh, when I worked at Disney Studios for a while, I talked to the lawyers there a little bit. And employees, you could actually uh, have an exhibit in the animation building. So in the course of my life, I've had two exhibits at Disney Studios. And that just, that was no money for them. It was not like a gallery set. I worked there. and. And so my art sold, and it was, to me, all the time, something like that happens, it amazes me. Uh, so that was a great credential, Disney Studios. Um, what I learned about uh, promoting and publicity, even bio writing, I worked for the record business. And I did publicity and promotion for singers and musicians. Everybody in here knows the Gap Band. They started with us. So it was like we had a small record company but we were um, Capitol Records, we were distributors, MCA, and so I learned a lot. I became national promotion manager. And in my mind, I said, okay, I can use that when I finally am promoting myself, you know. So I, I, I feel like any experience in life you have will help towards whatever goal that you really want to reach. The most important thing, if you want to make a living at it, is to always have something that anybody and everybody can buy. So I have mini prints, I call them mini prints. They're small, like about eight by 10 or a little larger than that. And those sell from anything like $10 to $20, okay? Then there's open edition prints and posters. They sell from anything from $40 to $100. Then there's limited edition that I sign and number, which means there's not gonna be any more than this many. And they sell from, from $100 to $300, $500. And then the upper end is G. Clay's on canvas. And because they look so much like the originals, that's the art that's here that you can see. I have 12 pieces here. So depending, and then I do this, I offer the G. Clays in different sizes. So say like if someone could afford like $250, $300, it would be a smaller one. If they wanted a huge 40 by, 30 by 30, they may pay something like $950. Then when it comes to the originals, they're different sizes because I've done a lot of children's books. So some of the paintings might be as small as this and might sell for 800 to 1,000. To date, the most I've sold a painting for was 25,000. And that's not, every, now you gotta get this, that's hardly every day. That was one year. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, um, 
just learning as I've gone. The other thing that I, the other important thing that I would say is to always be open because I've been, been open because I've been able to do things I'd never even thought of doing. And the first one was actually a huge, um, designing a huge mural for an airport, Ontario, California, a baggage claim terminal. It's uh, almost three feet high by 150 feet long. And it scared me to death when they said Cynthia St. James 150 feet. I just said, there's no way, there's no way I can do this. And then I learned a very important word called fabricator. There's someone that did the next terminal that also was ceramic tileless. So he fabricated my designs. And the whole time that I designed the 150 feet, I listened to Sade's greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. And that kind of, that took me through it. Believe me, it's not at all easy. It's, you have to come out of yourself or in yourself to, tr to do something and block out so many other things. Mm -hmm.